This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi guys, it's Kaz and today I have a book haul and an unboxing. We have quite a few books to discuss today and I've kind of separated them into three piles. So we have the books that I bought myself, then we have the stack of Hachette books. So I work for Hachette Australia, so just being very transparent there. These are books published by my employer, but honestly ones that I'm super excited about. And then these ones were all sent to me by the publishers unsolicited for review. So let's jump straight in with the books that I bought myself. First up we have a book that I have already read, so White Rage by Carol Anderson. I listened to the audiobook of it, which was great, but I did want to also have a physical copy of this so I could reread it and actually annotate the really important bits and things that stood out to me. I think it would just be a very beneficial thing for me to do to actually write everything down. But this is a non-fiction book that explores American history starting from the Civil War up into more present days and it looks at the ways in which the system, government, white people have worked to oppress black people. And for me this was really enlightening and educational. From what I've heard, and it makes total sense, Americans and specifically black Americans will already be aware of a lot of the things explored in here, but I definitely found this really valuable and there's a lot of things that I didn't really know about or had only heard snippets of and hadn't explored in greater detail. So yeah, this was definitely a valuable read for me and as I said I plan on rereading and annotating as I go to. Next up we have You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, another book I have already read and I think I gave this one five stars. I loved it! Again also listened to the audiobook for this one and immediately went and ordered myself a physical copy so I could have this in my hands and reread it because it was so so delightful. We follow Liz Lighty, she's in high school and she is running for prom queen. At her school prom king and prom queen are each awarded like a $10,000 scholarship to go towards their tertiary education which would be incredibly helpful for Liz since she didn't manage to get like a full scholarship into the school that she wanted. So it's about her campaign running for prom queen, reigniting some old friendships and also a new romantic interest with another one of the girls running for prom queen who's new to the school. The romance was so delightful. I loved this. Would thoroughly recommend. The next book we have is Gyo by Junji Ito. I picked this one up essentially because of Books with Chloe. I know she's read a couple of Jinji Ito's works and really enjoyed them and I was like hey why don't I give it a go which will be interesting but it's horror which I haven't really delved into before so that's going to be a new one but this one specifically kind of has some weird fish thing it looks disturbing but I'm gonna give it a go I'm gonna try it guys I'm gonna... we'll see we'll see we also finally have Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the sequel to Aurora Rising, which is a YA sci-fi series. We follow a cast of characters, um, but two of the main ones we have Tyler and Aurora. Tyler is in this space academy and he's set to be the valedictorian for his year and should essentially have like first choice of his crew. But he ends up missing his graduation because he takes a ship, goes out to explore a little bit, clear his head, and he stumbles across a ship wreck out in space and there is one survivor who is in cryogenic sleep, Aurora, and it's the aftermath of that. There's like a ragtag crew, there's a heist, they're on the run, and there's some weird things happening as well. So a little bit terrified to continue and see where things go because my poor babies, but I'm excited. We also have A Song of Wraiths and Ruins by Roseanne A. Brown. This is the most beautiful book I've ever seen. But this is a book I've been seeing making the rounds and I recently on Instagram asked for your guys suggestions if there's any specific books or series that you wanted to see me do like a reading vlog for and a lot of people said A Song of Race and Ruin so I think I'm probably gonna have to do a reading vlog for this one. So it looks like we follow two main characters, Malik and Karina. Malik is on his way to attend this festival, which is kind of his chance to escape his war-stricken home and start a new life with his sisters. But when they get to the city, Zoran, where this festival is being held, Malik's younger sister is abducted by a vengeful spirit as payment for entering the city. So Malik strikes a deal, kill the princess Karina and his sister will be returned to him. And then we have Karina who is grief-stricken. Her mother has died and she decides 
to resurrect her mother by using some ancient magic which requires a beating heart. And she knows how to get one. She decides to hold a competition during this festival and the winner will win her hand in marriage. Obviously these two characters' worlds collide. I'm assuming Malik enters this competition, things get interesting, perhaps a romance, we shall see. I don't know, I'm excited. And now for a word from our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people looking to expand their skills and their knowledge. The platform offers thousands upon thousands of classes on a range of different topics from things like illustration, design, photography, videos, marketing, and even productivity. The latter is one that I'm definitely trying to take advantage of at the moment. I am currently in the middle of a class called Productivity Masterclass, Principles and Tools to Boost Your Productivity by Ali Abdal. This is proving to be a really interesting class because it not only talks about ways to improve your productivity, but it delves deeply into the principles as well and some different myths and laws about productivity which is really fascinating but also definitely going to come in handy when I'm trying to apply all of these new tools and techniques for improving my own productivity especially since life has been just very interesting in 2020 so far. Most classes on Skillshare are under 60 minutes and are split into shorter lessons so it's really easy to fit into your busy schedules. Skillshare members get unlimited access to all of the classes and the premium membership is quite affordable as well. If you get the yearly membership it ends up being less than 10 US dollars a month. So if this is something that is interesting to you and you'd like to give it a try, please do check out the link in my description. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. I'd honestly really recommend giving the platform a go, testing it out for yourself and seeing if any of the classes work for you. There are classes for different skill levels, so I'm sure there's something that you'll be able to find that really intrigues you there. And it'll also really help me out as well. So don't forget to check out the link in my description. And now back to the book haul. These next two on this stack are ones that I'm super excited about, but we have Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the second book in the David Bad trilogy, sequel to City of Brass, which I read and really enjoyed. I have the third book on the way as well. I can't remember what it's called, but it's on the way too. So I'm probably going to be picking this one up very soon. Can't wait to dive into it and see where things go. Next up, we have Upon a Burning Throne by Ashok K. Banker. I've mentioned this a few times. It's one that I'm really anticipating reading. I was hoping to read it during the Time Topple Readathon, but sadly didn't get around to picking it up. But it's high on my TBR pile. This is an Indian inspired high fantasy novel. So it's set in a world where there are demigods and demons, and the emperor of the burnt empire has died. But inheritance doesn't mean succession. In order to become the next emperor one must sit upon the burning throne and pass the test of fire. But what's interesting is we have two princes, Audrey and Shvate, but I think the two of them pass the test of fire. But there is a third person with a claim. It says a girl from an outlying kingdom and she also passes the test. So <laughs> this sounds really great. So the next three books I have I'm not going to show you because they're part of a secret TBR, which I've been meaning to do for the, uh, a couple of months now. Hopefully sometime soon you'll be able to see what these books actually are, but just know there's something coming. Now moving on to the Hachette books. We have Holopox by Jessica Townsend. This is the third book in the Nevermore series. First of all, I am here for the purple. It is giving me life. The gold foiling is beautiful. As the third book in the series, I'm not going to touch upon what this is about, but this is a magical middle grade series. The first book, Nevermore, follows a girl called Morrigan Crow who is cursed. She was born on an unlucky day and is essentially blamed for all of her town's misfortune. And I think she's destined to die on her 11th or 12th birthday. On the eve of this day, she is whisked away to the magical world of Nevermore and must pass a set of trials in order to stay there. The Hate Race by Maxine Beniba Clark. This one I think is going to be a really powerful read. It is a memoir of Maxine's life growing up in Australia, being black in a white middle class Australia. I think this is going to be a really touching one. It says it's going to be funny and at times devastating. Next up we have... The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. I'm going to read from a couple of things that I think really encapsulate what this is going to be about. So this is described as a story set on an American plantation about two young slaves who fall in love, but specifically I think it's about a queer relationship. There's also a letter from the author in here that says, as a black queer person who has felt so cut off from my lineage, the question I wanted to ask, did black queer people exist in the distant past? 
Of course they did, but it's often the way of a traumatized people to erase the past, shun excavation of it, deny it ever existed, or pretend that it looked some other erroneous but glorious way. This is understandable. Who would want to explain the horrors of yesteryear with no way of stopping the pain from returning? I'm very much excited about this one. Also, like, the proof of this is so beautiful. Okay, next up, ooh, do you love me a sprayed edge? We have Shiver by Ali Reynolds. This is by an Aussie author, which, hello, gotta love that. But on the cover it also says Agatha Christie in the Alps, so it looks like we've got like a mystery thriller going on, which sounds awesome. So Miller is invited to a reunion with four of her friends at this resort in the French Alps. But when they get there, they realise that they've been purposefully stranded at the resort. There is no one at the hotel, it's completely deserted, but when they get inside, there are instructions to play some sinister game to remind them about Saskia, who was the sixth member of this group that vanished on the mountain years before. Sounds interesting. A Declaration of the Rights of Magicians by H.G. Parry. I'll admit that I was intrigued by this one because it has been compared to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which is a favourite. I absolutely adored that book and when I saw that comparison I was like, this means I must read it, okay? Not gonna lie, the synopsis is still pretty mysterious to me, but from what I can gather it's set during the Age of Enlightenment with a lot of political movements and upheaval, um, but there's also magic in here too. But amidst all of the changes, there is this unknown force inciting violence. And it says it will require the combined efforts of revolutionaries, magicians, and abolitionists to unmask this hidden enemy. What do we have next? Ooh, yes, okay. The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms and The Broken Kingdoms. I do also have book three in this trilogy. I showed it to you in my previous book haul because it arrived before these two did. But I have been thoroughly enjoying N.K. Jemisin's works, absolutely adoring the Broken Earth trilogy, and I recently read and loved The City We Became, so I'm just acquiring all of N.K. Jemisin's books. N.K. Jemisin put a pronunciation guide for this series on her website, which is super, super useful, so I will keep a note of that when I do get around to reading it. So in The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, we follow Yaina, whose mother dies under mysterious circumstances, and she is summoned to the city of Sky, which is a palace up in the clouds. When she gets there, however, Yaina is named one of the heirs to the king. However, getting the throne is not going to be easy. So she's kind of thrown into this chaotic, dangerous power struggle with two cousins she didn't even know she had, and she's just trying to fight for her life and to survive, whilst also trying to uncover the secrets of her mother's death. Sounds really cool. I've heard wonderful things about this series and that it's super unique, which to be expected from N.K. Jemisin, so <sighs> once I finish the Broken Earth trilogy I will be diving into this and I'll let you know what I think then. Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia and I'm sure you guys have probably seen this making the rounds recently. I've been seeing quite a few people picking it up or putting it on their TBRs for the month. We follow our main character Noemi who receives a letter from her cousin talking about weird and strange things that are happening. She's basically begging to be rescued, she's recently married a man that no one else really knows about, and she's essentially claiming that her husband is poisoning her. So Noemi goes off to visit her cousin but when she gets there her cousin says, no, 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 it's just tuberculosis. But Noemi decides to stay and then, whilst in her cousin's mansion, weird, creepy, eerie things start to happen. Sounds very intriguing, so excited about this one. All right, we also have Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. So Catherine House is a university for women, I believe, and during your time at Catherine House you basically have no contact with the outside world. And it says, if we believe you have wandered from the path of learning, you may be sent to the tower. Each of the students has been selected as someone who belongs here. I don't know too much else about it, the synopsis is rather vague, but it sounds very mysterious and I'm really curious to know what is going on in Catherine House. The shelves are full, time to empty them. While we have the empty shelf, I think I'm gonna switch it up and quickly unbox the fairy loot box. This is the July fairy loot box. We have some art on the top already. Here is the content card though. So the theme for this month is Resilient Royals. First up we have an art print featuring two characters from The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Vasya and Morozko. I very much enjoyed The Bear and the Nightingale. Still have to finish the third book but it's a series that I have been really enjoying. Super atmospheric series, really enjoying it. And this art print is so striking. Like their eyes are just like piercing. This is so, so beautiful. Next up we have a candle, which is the Ash Crown Black Currant Tea. Ooh. 
Ooh, that is nice. I'm very much a fan of that scent. Very subtle, but kind of creamy. This is inspired by Theo from The Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. A series that I still have to read, but I plan on doing it sometime soon. I'm going to do like a series vlog when I do get around to reading it. Let you guys know how that goes. Ooh, The Queen's Rising card holder. Oh, I like this. Okay, so it is exactly what it says. It is a card holder, your credit, debit cards, all that fun stuff. But the design of this is just so, so stunning with the sun and stars. Gosh, this is so pretty. The design itself is inspired by The Queen's Rising, and this is something I think is going to be very much used by myself. I have like a, one of those really long kind of obnoxiously large wallets which doesn't work when I have a small handbag. So this will do nicely to like temporarily hold all of my essentials. I mentioned this last time but I'm really liking all of the paper packaging rather than plastic for some of the things coming in Fairy Loots boxes. <gasps> This is adorable. We have a set of magnetic bookmarks inspired by Woven in Moonlight, which I think was included in a fairy loot box, but I think these are designed by the author herself, which is amazing. And it's so, so cute. Look at the sloth though. Oh, bless. These are freaking adorable. We have a pillowcase which I think is inspired by Crescent City. It says, through love, all is possible. Sarah J Mass. Oh, first up, this is super stunning. Then we have this design on the back. That is so cool. I very much appreciate the color scheme of this because the, the cushions that I have on my couch, they're all black. But if I do get any bookish pillowcases, I try and get ones that are like black or red or white. So <laughs> hello. We also have this little tray, which says one should never save cake for later when it can be eaten now. Winter Marissa Meyer. That is so cute. I really like the illustration of this. We've got like a crow or a raven. I think it's a crow. Other birds. Just cake down the bottom, mushrooms, flowers and leaves. Gosh, this is super pretty. We also have the tarot cards which were received in the fairy loot boxes. This month we have the four of swords and the three of swords. I think by the look of it, that these are two characters from the Darker Shade of Magic series by V.E. Schwab. So we're pretty much at the bottom of the box. We have the bookmark featuring the illustration from the content card by Fairy Loot. We also have this art print, which on the back has a letter from the author of the book in this month's box, which is Shielded by Kaylin Flanders. I don't think I've heard of this before. I quite like this cover. I really like the green. That is very striking. Before I dive into what this is about, we also, of course, have Fairy Scoop, which inside features a Q&A with the author and also shows like the difference between the covers. The standard cover actually is blue in the background, whereas the Fairy Loot exclusive is green. And there's also black sprayed edges, and I think it's signed by the author too. There's also some information for the August Fairy Loot box, the theme of which is Let the Games Begin. Items inspired by... Ember in the Ashes, Hunting Prince Dracula, Never Night Scythe, Aura Rising, Magical Blend of Stardust and Hindu Mythology. That sounds really cool. Let's go back to the book of the month, Shielded. So what are you about? So we have the Kingdom of Helendi and we follow Genesara, who is second born. Her older brother, as the firstborn, has magical abilities, which Jenna lacks, but she does have skills on the battlefield, which would be a great asset if her father let her. So the king actually promises her hand in marriage to a prince of a neighboring kingdom in exchange for resources. So she has no choice, she must leave. Her caravan is ambushed and she realizes the rumors were wrong. The new threat is worse than anyone imagined. Sounds really cool. Love me a good kingdom, political, magical situation going on. So yay! Thank you so much Fairy Loot. Fairy Loot very kindly sent this box my way so a huge thank you and if you guys want to find out a little bit more information I'll have their website linked in the description as well as a coupon code so you can get a discount on your first Fairy Loot box. Now let's continue with the rest of the book haul. Next up we have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I'm sure you guys have also heard a lot about this one. Again I've been seeing so many people talking about this book, reading and raving about it. In this one we follow a set of twin sisters who are black but they are white passing and later on in life they end up kind of diverging and one of them embraces her blackness and lives as a black woman. The other one 
ends up hiding this part of her identity and her husband doesn't even know that she is black. So I think that even though these two sisters went very different ways, obviously their lives are very much entwined with each other. And I think that their own daughter's storylines intersect in some way. So this sounds like a really powerful novel about family, identity, gender, race. It's going to be an interesting time. Like I said, I've heard so many wonderful things about this so far. I'm thrilled to have it in my hands so I can read it too. Now we're moving on to the books I received from publishers for review. So first up we have a book that I've already talked about in my last book haul, House of Dragons by Jessica Cluis. So I previously hauled the proof edition but I also received the final copy. This is essentially a battle for the throne. The Emperor of Etrusia is dead and the way in which the new Emperor is selected in this world is that the oldest child of each of the five main houses of Etrusia come together and kind of battle it out. But this year is a little bit different because rather than having the oldest child it seems like there are five outcasts who are fighting for the throne. There is the liar, the soldier, the servant, the thief, and the murderer. Let the battle begin. Sounds really cool. Very excited about this one. We have The Erasure Initiative by Lily Wilkinson. I think this is a bit of a psychological thriller. We have our main character who wakes up on a moving bus with no memory of who she is or why she's there. There are six other people on this bus and there are a series of tests that they are given. Each of the passengers must kind of choose the outcome and the majority wins. However, these tests end up getting deadlier and deadlier. Sounds very fascinating to me. Next up we have Camp by L.C. Rosen, which looks like it's going to be a queer novel. It says top or bottom, it's time to bunk up. We have a little badge on the front with a rainbow cabin, which looks great. She's all that for the drag race generation, the ultimate feel-good LGBTQ plus rom-com. This one is set at a camp specifically for queer teens, and the main character, Randy, really enjoys spending his summer at this camp. It's where he's met his best friends, it's where he gets to participate in the big musical, and he's developed a bit of a crush on another guy who only seems to be interested in, like, straight acting guys. So this year, Randy decides to reinvent himself buff, muscular, he sacrifices the musical, sacrifices the show tunes and his unicorn bed sheets, and finally catches the attention of this guy that he's been into. But as the two of them grow closer I think Randy starts to question if love is worth willing to change yourself for? And is it even really love if this guy doesn't know his true self? Next up we have books one and two in this series by Amanda Hocking, The Lost City and The Morning Flower. This is a fantasy YA and we follow Ulla who is half troll, half human I believe, and she is abandoned at birth. But she's never really forgotten about her origins and teams up with another half human researcher to try and figure out who her parents are. However things get a little bit tricky when it's revealed that she might potentially have royal lineage. Something along those lines sounds mysterious and interesting. We have Harrow Lake by Kat Ellis which I gotta say for like my generation and above super cool packaging for this because it the proof is made to look like a VHS tape. My childhood! <laughs> Oh god, this is a throwback. I really appreciate this. It sounds very cool. Obviously, VHS tapes are gonna have something to do with the story in this one. So this is set in a small town with a rather gory history, and it has its own monster mythology, which sounds interesting. There's a local legend of Mr. Jitters, who's trapped underground and survives by feeding off the dead. But now he's got a taste for flesh and wants revenge. There's also this cult horror movie called Nightjar, which was filmed in Harrow Lake. The shoot was plagued by strange disturbances and disappearances. 20 years later, the star's daughter goes to Harrow Lake to learn about the mother she can barely remember and the monster that she's obsessed with. That sounds creepy, but I'm super intrigued by this one. Like I said, packaging on point. The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra White. Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. So this is a Shadowhunter novel which I think is part of the Eldest Curses series. This is book two. The first one was The Red Scrolls of Magic and I'm not going to touch upon the synopsis because I don't know much about this series specifically except for the fact that we have Magnus Bane and Alec Lightwood. A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. It says Lesson One of the Scholomance. This is a book that I'm really intrigued by. Okay, I own Uprooted. I have read Spinning Silver and sadly didn't love it, but the concept of this sounds so intriguing and I, I think I'm going to really enjoy it. First up, we have a school of magic. <laughs> which yes please. But it's a school unlike any other. There are no teachers, there are no holidays, friendships are pretty much entirely strategic and the rates of one's survival is not entirely equal either. 
What does that mean? I want to know. Cannot wait to read this. But basically the only ways to leave this school is you graduate or you die. But then we have Elle Higgins and she enters this school with quite an advantage. She has a dark power and is incredibly powerful. So powerful in fact that she might accidentally kill all of the students. So she's trying her hardest not to use this power unless she has to. I will be reading this in October. Little bit of an unsubtle hint for my book club's book of the month for October. I'm very very excited to read this. Next up we have The Other Side of the Sky by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. It looks like we follow two main characters, Prince North and Niv. Prince North lives in a city in the sky that is held aloft by intricate but unknown technology and he believes that his city is sinking so he decides to travel to wherever the engines for this city were first created. And then we have Niv, who is a living goddess of the people on the surface. But on the surface they are experiencing a huge crisis. There is this mist that's encompassing the land which is very poisonous and seems to spread madness and doubts have started to arise about Niv's divinity. These two characters end up crossing paths. Lastly but certainly not least we have The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. So this is from the author of The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, not to be confused with the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This one sounds wonderful. I'm really excited by this one. Again, another mystery, but on the high seas. It's set like in the early 1600s, and we have Samuel Pipps, who I think is kind of like our Sherlock Holmes esque figure. He's the world's most renowned detective who is traveling to Amsterdam with his loyal bodyguard, and he's basically going to be executed for a crime he may or may not have committed. I'm curious. But after they've set sail, some weird things start to happen on the ship. There are weird symbols that appear on the sails, there's livestock that are being slaughtered, and there are three men that are marked for death, including Samuel himself. It sounds really cool. I'm excited. I just want to say a huge thank you to all of the publishers for sending me these books. I always really appreciate it. So many exciting books to add to my TBR pile. And before I wrap up this video, I have another booktuber recommendation for you. So today I want to urge you all to go over and check out Tish from Little Wolf. I only recently discovered Tish, but immediately fell in love with their videos, the vibe, and a recent video that I think is super, super cool. It's called Me as a Character in Books. And rather than like cosplaying as a specific character. It's like if Tish existed in these specific books, what would they be like? Which I think is such a cool idea. Definitely go and check it out. Love it a lot and cannot wait to see more of Tish's videos. So that concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. If you did manage to reach the end of this, please let me know. Put a little wine glass emoji in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. Love you guys a lot. See you in a new video, but until then, talk to you in the comments. Bye!